Hi everyone and welcome to the next uh, Aeons interview of the one of our members of the uh, Aeons faculty. Tonight we have with us Jeff Siegel, Australian trumpet player who's uh, as you'll hear in his story played all over the world and has a really fascinating uh, life story. Welcome Jeff. Thanks Jeff. I'm absolutely delighted and thrilled to be here and to get to chat with you as we were just reflecting we've known each other for 30 35 years and it's a yep. yeah and so if i to tell my story it, there are a lot of i could choose there are so many different stories i could tell but i guess this is the story of how why i'm on the aeons faculty and why i'm a, a trumpet teacher again i think um in the trumpet world it's fairly well known that i stopped playing a long time ago i stopped in 2002 and here i am now playing again and teaching again so this is a pretty good opportunity for me to yeah talk about why and maybe for people that are clicking onto Aeons to think about why they would even bother to have a lesson with me. So it's a bit of <laughs> the why and the what and just it's great to catch up with you know with you as a, as a as a friend I've known for many years. So I started playing the trumpet I think it was 83 or 84 and my dad was a pretty amazing guy and for my very first trumpet lesson ever he took me to Dan Mendeler and so my first introduction to the trumpet was hearing I didn't know then but since then I've realized one of the very best trumpet sounds you will ever hear and so the first thing I heard was Dan's sound and Dan didn't have time to take me on and he sent me to hit one of his students Paul Goodchild who was in the SSO as well and so I had the luck to learn from Paul and Paul's dad Cliff for a couple of years and then I went back to Dan and being a musician in Sydney in the 80s was pretty amazing. And Dan and so many people gave me so many opportunities. And I got the chance to learn from Dan and then go and hear him in the orchestra. And we used to go to every concert. And then later on, even when I was in year 12, I got to play Tarangalila, which was a, that's a whole story. That was the time that the Opera House lights went out. And so I got to to play in the orchestra and then I was I was having lessons from Dan and playing and then I got to play in the Australian Chamber Orchestra and do all sorts of amazing things. And then in 1990, it was time to go and seek my fortune. So off I went to Europe <laughs> and I landed in Basel where I was really lucky to learn Baroque trumpet from Ed Tarr and to learn modern trumpet from Mark Ulrich. And then a whole, then the, you know, the normal thing came. I, I got to my first job in Hof. And then I got my second job in the Lausanne Chamber Orchestra, which was a very special time living in Lausanne, learning French and starting to do a little bit of solo playing and teaching as well. I started teaching at the Sion Academy. Then in 96, I got my job in Zurich as um, they call it solo trompeter and principal trumpet in the Tornhalle Orchestra. David Zinman was our boss. And that was pretty amazing amazing colleagues, fantastic conductors, a great hall. We toured a lot and I got to, you know, I was there six years, principal trumpet, got to play a lot of the, the big repertoire. And at the same time, I was playing concertos around the place, got to do all sorts of interesting concerts. I was teaching as well. I taught for a couple of years at the Basel Conservatorium and my summer school in Sion. And I loved it. I really, I was I was 100% my identity was Jeff is a trumpet player and a trumpet teacher and that was me but I'd always kind of thought I would do something else and then around 2001, 2002, my playing, I wasn't happy with it. It wasn't, it wasn't the level that I thought it should be and I talked to David Zinman about having six months off and that had kind of been agreed and then... You know, there was there was a Saturday morning we were doing Domestica and this the the paridam parari, it wasn't coming out. And I mean I could have got a smaller trumpet, I could have got through, but something in me just said, right, stop. And so from that Saturday morning, I uh, David wasn't very happy. I think he's forgiven me now, I hope, <laughs> David, if you ever see this. Uh, and then I kind of <laughs> said, Well, look, I'm not coming back. I'm done. Done. I didn't go back, and then I didn't play a note. From then until, well, more than a decade later, I didn't play at all. And by then I had, got, I was, I'd been doing karate and yoga for a few years, but around 2000, I'd started training Tai Chi Chuan, Tai Chi and 
Qigong and Shaolin Kung Fu. And I was really into that, as my um, colleagues in Zurich will remember. I was into that. And so I had something else that I was really interested in. So I started, I went down that rabbit hole and I trained a lot, traveled around Southeast Asia training and I started teaching Tai Chi. Then I was lucky enough to meet my amazing wife, Lauren, and we traveled around the world in 2004. And then we, I came back and I'd never really been to uni. I did a bit of the con when I was a kid, but I hadn't really gone to uni. And the Chinese medicine thing appealed to me. I was into martial arts. So I thought, okay, I'll do a degree. So I did a double degree in Chinese medicine and human biology, five years full time, back to uni. Which is a really interesting thing because I did my HSC in 86 and a lot of my dear friends, they were born that year that I was studying with. And that was pretty amazing. And then I had a, had a new thing. I was, a, you know, oh, Jeff's not a, Jeff's, a, Jeff's a Tai Chi teacher and a Chinese medicine practitioner. And I had some amazing teachers in Chinese medicine as well. And did that for a few years, but uh, it, was, it was okay, but it wasn't really quiet for me. And so next rabbit hole was I did a, a teaching degree, a master's of teaching. And I started, I did a, a high school one actually, but then I started teaching in primary schools and did a number of roles. I did a couple of years at uh, Camberwell Primary, which is a bilingual school. So I was their science teacher teaching all these primary school kids in French, which is an interesting thing to do. <laughs> and then last year, coincidentally with lockdown, but the government had launched this new uh, Victorian high ability program. So, you know, cut a long story short, I got my current job and I'm a leading teacher for maths in doing this. It's an online program and I love it. And last year in lockdown, when we were, make, I wasn't, we weren't doing online lessons the first time, but we were doing videos for the kids. And so mm -hmm. I started just, I don't know, the trumpet just came out and I started just making little, little vids and, and I realized, wow, this isn't, this is okay. I quite like it. And now it's a, it's a little while, a month or so ago, my good friend Fabian rang me up and said, hey, you know, I'm doing Brahms too. Do you want to play? And I said, yeah, I will, but I'm not playing first. And so he got he got this really nice um, girl called Sophie and I did that. And, and then I actually started practicing again and I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying practicing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I realized that, through all of my amazing teachers, and I haven't even talked about my connection with Hawkan Hardenberger, who I met when he came to Sydney and I had a fantastic, I would say, a proper apprenticeship with him through many years, through Hawkan and Dan and Paul and Cliff and Mark and Ed. I really had some ideas and, of course, my own playing. And I thought, well, I think, te I, think I really think I can bring all of this together, the martial arts the meditation, the focus, the me as, as a teacher that, who listens to really what's going on, not just not just at a surface level. And, yeah, I've given a couple of lessons and then I'd seen that what you had going with Aeons and it really appealed to me a lot, the idea that people can connect from all over the world. And, yeah, I'm here I am ready and willing to, to, to teach. Right. Amazing, amazing story. But one bit that you uh, have message, uh, mentioned that I saw even the other day on YouTube, it's fascinating. How is it five languages oh, that you speak? Yeah, roughly? it depends how you count them. It can be seven or eight. It depends how you count them. Okay. So it, it kind of started that I, you know, I lived, I, well, it's a bit of a story. The first year I was in Basel, Ed's American, all my friends were Swedes, and I didn't learn any German. I was like, that was a dropout. Then I got my first job in Hof, and so I did learn German. Then I went to Lausanne, I did learn French, and then I started to realise, oh, actually, this is something I'm not bad at. And so I learned Spanish because I had friends. I wanted to I actually really love Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I wanted to read that in the original language. And then a little bit this... Thing of Jeff in German, this expression "venchon denchon," which means if you're going to do something, really do it. So when I did my Chinese medicine degree, I thought, well, you know, better learn Chinese. So I lived in Beijing for a, a, a for a couple of months and studied that. And yeah, so I speak a bit of Swedish because I was Hawkins' assistant in Malmo for a year. Mm. And you know, you speak French, you speak Spanish. It's not that hard with Italian, and can, you know, can, can kind of. <laughs> not for you, it's not. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that, that kind of, and yeah, I'm, 
I'm proud of my Swiss German. Wonderful. I lived in Zurich and I learned Swiss German. Anyway, you know. <laughs> so do you think there's a relationship? I, f I find this personally fascinating. I've always, you know, music in, in itself is a language to me and an oral you know, oral language, it's not a, it is a written language, obviously, but it's really fundamentally an oral language. I've always been really interested about this uh, and the, uh, and how that affects or how music, how those two come together when you've got oral language and, and you know, language and whether that actually helped you because of the, you know, very deep thinker, obviously, and how you do it, uh, your, your music, is there, do you think there's a relationship between the two? I think there is. I'm not sure that it's explicit, but I do. I do think there's a. I do think. Well, I'm going to answer. I'm going to take. I'm going to go up. Go up a level. I think that the languages and the cultures are very connected. So, I, the reason I wanted to learn Chinese is because of the connection between Chinese culture, Chinese martial arts, and Chinese medicine. With the language, I think that definitely the sound of French and the sound of German are very connected to the way you play German music and French music and the articulation on the trumpet. So I do think there is a strong connection. Mm. And you hear that, you hear that the way, I mean, even it's a simple thing, but the way um, a Spanish or Italian person rolls their R's, it's at the front of the tongue and a French is at the back of the tongue and there, and that gives a very different sound. So I think I think you can look at it on the micro and the macro level, and I think there are a yeah. lot of connections. I think there's also a lot of connection with maths, and I'm not just saying that because oh, I'm a maths teacher. No, no, I, I totally agree. I think that's what fascinated me about, you know, that they're not the same. There's similar stories from lots of musicians who have, particularly in Europe, multilingual capabilities, and, and this, but this extension with maths as well, which is absolutely a language in its own right, and... Uh, it's so fascinating to watch so many wonderful videos on YouTube of mathematicians who actually find it an art form. And I, I, I think that's incredibly inspiring. You know, and for children to understand maths as an art form, uh, you know, from these people's minds and how it's such a creative pursuit rather than a, you know, a drudge that's often taught at schools, unfortunately. Yeah, well, that's definitely the way we teach. We definitely, we, um, in our teaching, we talk about the three E's in mathematics, whether a solution is efficient, uh, effective or elegant. So we're looking for the elegance in maths. And that definitely has a lot of parallels in the way of playing, whether you're playing, you know, the efficiency of playing is important, but also the elegance and the, you know, also on the trumpet, the effectiveness, like if it isn't being heard and that, links back to what I, you know, what I learned from Dan about, you know, about being heard at the back of the hall and at the front of the hall, all of those kinds of things. So, yeah, I do, I do like to make all the connections. Yeah, no, I find this really fascinating. Thanks so much, Jeff. I really appreciate your time tonight. It's great to get to, you know, for all of us to get to understand your story and your journey is that, uh, you know, so often we can see um, the musicians up on, uh, on Aeons and just, it's hard to understand exactly how they got there and all the different factors that actually go into to becoming a, a great musician. And uh, it's really wonderful to hear your story. So I appreciate your time and please uh, go and uh, have a look at Jeff's profile at Aeons. And um, the, there's even a free consultation there, I think, where you can get to know each other, and uh, which is a great thing to do, get to know each other, see how you work together, and it's a great first step to take. Thank you very much, Jeff. And I just would like to say I'm grateful to be part of the Aeons faculty. When I saw the list of um, – it's, pr it's a pretty illustrious list of trumpet players, and I'm very, very proud to be, to be, to be on the faculty. So thank oh, you as well. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to have you. Speak soon. Thanks. Bye.